Sabadi everybody, I'm currently in Vientiane, the capital city of Laos and um, I'm in my private room, I've booked in for two nights into a hotel, thought I'd treat myself so I thought I'd use the opportunity to be by myself and in peace and quiet to just talk to you about uh, my journey through Laos and um, my thoughts on uh, travelling solo as a backpacker and um, kind of what I've been up to for the last two weeks I just kicked my camera over so it's going well already let's be careful and um, so for those that are following my adventures and my travels you may have seen my blog which i did about um, how i got into Laos and um, so i will put that below so you can read exactly about um, like the details and more information about it but i got a two-day boat trip uh, which started in Chiang Rai in Thailand and it took me to Lang Prabang in Laos um, it was a really cool experience overall uh, but yeah there's more information in that blog post. Um, so from there I went to Lang Prabang and on the boat I met a really cool group of people, shout out to anyone that's watching, um, and we kind of stuck together, we were in the same hostel or some of us were in hostels nearby and we spent the next few days in Laos exploring um, Lang Prabang. Um, one of the best things I think in my opinion that we did was we went to Quang Si Falls um, which I also did a short YouTube video about um, what I'd been up to in that time between, between Chiang Rai and Lang Prabang so that's in there as well but um, Quang Si Falls was probably one of the best things that I've done in Laos altogether it was a really cool day out um, we spent some time exploring the town of Lang Prabang um, some of the people I was with they took motorbikes and went further out but I'm not that brave um, and yeah generally overall i love lang prabang and i would highly recommend it to anyone that was interested in coming to this side of the world um i would say three to four nights in lang prabang and there's loads to do and i mean i spent a week there so i really enjoyed it um from there um i got a minivan to van vm um, I'd heard about Vang Vieng being quite a party town, um, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Um, but I caught the minivan and it took, I think it was about six hours to Vang Vieng. Um, the roads are extremely bumpy, gravelly, um, so it wasn't the most comfortable of rides. Um, some of the roads have like a really sharp drop sharp drop down the cliff sides where there's no barriers or anything um i took a minivan but some of the people are traveling with took a coach which is a lot bigger and they said it was quite scary to be in such a large vehicle on tight roads so i was glad to take the minivan um however the views along the way were beautiful and um, for the first part of the journey it kind of felt quite new zealand-esque um, rolling hills um, it was just beautiful and um, even though the roads were quite windy and bumpy I really enjoyed the views um, and then the further south we got you could see that it turned into um, a different type of landscape so there were more limestone cliffs and um, it felt very much like uh, southern Thailand you know PP-esque but inland so it was really cool and I, I actually really enjoyed the journey despite the bumpiness I also sat in the front, so if you can, when you book your ticket, ask to sit with the driver because then you get the views, you're not cramped in the back, and you get the leg room. And for me, it helps with travel sickness as well. So, um, pretty much every bus that I've asked for, they've let me sit in the front. So, that's a good tip. Um, so, we got to Vang Vien, and I booked three nights um, with one of the girls I was traveling with into a hostel where some of the people from Lang Prabang had gone um, to Van Vian before us. So we booked into the same hostel as them. Um, it was quite a sociable hostel. It was in the middle of town. Um, it was really nice. It had a swimming pool, which was clean. It had a pool table, a sociable area. You could order food. There was free breakfast. The beds were clean enough. Um, there was no hot water. There was supposed to be hot water, but there was no hot water. It didn't work, so that was the downside. Um, but it was a really cheap um, hostel, so you kind of get what you pay for. Um, the time I spent there, I enjoyed. However, um, after the first night out, 
I was kind of done <laughs> with the vibe and um, it's very much as I'd heard party-esque so um, in the hostels they do free whiskey between 7 and 8 for example um, you then move on to the next club where they do free whiskey and beer from 8 till 9 you then move to another uh, bar where they'll do free whiskey and beer from 9 till 10 so on and so forth so it's like a bar crawl that people do every night I couldn't drink the whiskey, I didn't even try, it smelled horrific, apparently it cost £1 for a litre bottle of this whiskey and it was just not for me. Um, I ended up just having a beer and then sticking to water, um, so you got free uh, whiskey, free beer, but you had to pay for the water, that's what you get for being boring. Um, so we went out to the clubs. Um, Van Vieng, it turns out, is a huge Korean party town. Um, so lots of people come from South Korea to Van Vieng on holiday and to party. Much, I would describe it like uh, British people going to Magaluf or somewhere in Spain. So it was very similar. There was lots of uh, South, South Korean people. Um, there was lots of Korean music, uh, Korean food. So that was quite interesting. And not what I expected, um, but it was really cool, really great music, random music, um, but overall I had a great night, but after that night was done, I, I was done, my partying days were over for Lao, pretty much. Um, so after the three nights in Vang Vieng, um, I booked myself into another hostel which is out of town, it was literally like a 20 minute walk, but I just got a tuk tuk. Um, it cost me about two pounds and that took me um, to Magic Monkey Garden, I think it was called. Um, as soon as I walked in, I knew I was going to love it there. Um, there was this open plan um, eating area and then you walked out into a huge garden which had a swimming pool, it had a decking, it had fairy lights and it overlooked the mountains of Van Vien. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I paid more for this hostel, so usually I think the hostel I paid for in town was about four to five pounds for a night, whereas I was paying about nine pounds. Um, uh, the dorm rooms, well, well there was only one dorm room, the rest was bungalows. The bungalows were all fully booked and quite expensive, so I booked into the dorm room where there was 20 people in one dorm room, however you would never have known it, and the way the beds were built, they were like pods. Um, so you had your own like wall space with a curtain and your own light and your own power socket and it was very private and um, I found it to be very quiet and um, there was actually quite a few couples and older people staying there there wasn't really a party vibe I found it really relaxing and exactly what I wanted um, so the first night there it was a Friday night and every Friday they do free barbecue um, so when I got there I settled on the viewing platform and I could see um, hot air balloons going over um, so the hot air balloons go over at sunrise and sunset so you could see the people watching the sunset from the hot air balloon but um, as much as I would have liked to do that I actually really enjoyed being able to see the hot air balloons and take pictures and um, watch the sunset just from the decking so that was really cool. You could see the farmers bringing their cattle in for the night um, you could see the locals um, playing out, it was Friday night, it was nearly their weekend so they were, the kids were running around and um, it was just really peaceful, it was really lovely. Um, then the, the people at the hostel put on a barbecue, so they um, just barbecued some uh, pork and then they laid a spread out um, on the table for everybody who was staying at the hostel and uh, they did large lettuce leaves noodles, uh, different bits of salad, and then the pork with some sauce, so you made like a lettuce wrap. Um, it was really, it was really tasty and ended up uh, sitting with a group of people who um, were really lovely. We, we ended up chatting all night. Um, one of the ladies that I was sitting with, she had just been offered a job, so there was quite a celebratory vibe, which was cool. Um, and yeah, I, as soon as I'd done that first night, I knew I was going to love it there. So I ended up staying for five nights. 
um, and every day I did the same thing. I woke up, had an iced coffee, had breakfast, got in my bikini, laid by the pool, worked on my tan. You can see I've actually got a bit of a tan now. That's all thanks to these last five days in Pang Vien. So yeah, I laid by the pool um, and it was really, really hot. So um, I think it was getting to like mid thirties every day. Um, so I laid, got my tan, um, dunked in the pool to cool off, got back out, read a book. So I think I got through like three books in five days while I was there. Um, however, on my third day there, the owners of the hostel emptied the pool and I was so gutted. Um, they said that they needed to do some maintenance on it. Um, the water wasn't particularly the cleanest water I've ever seen. So they emptied the pool, did a bit of maintenance and that took two days. So by the time I left, they were only just filling the pool back up. Um, but what can you do? And the food was really great. I didn't even need to leave the hostel. Like I did not leave the hostel the whole time I was there. And I didn't even feel bad about it. Um, Van Vieng is famous for its tubing. Uh, where you sit in a rubber tube and float down the river um, and stop at all the pubs and bars on the way um, and get drunk. It's famous for the Blue Lagoons and it's famous for climbing the viewpoint. So tubing, I've done tubing before in Texas and um, yeah, I didn't really necessarily feel the need to do it again. Um, the government cracked down on the tubing. They shut loads of the restaurants and the pubs and the bars on the river down because uh, it was so dangerous, people were getting extremely drunk, I think there were a few deaths, and I tubing, I just wasn't interested in doing it. The Blue Lagoons, um, I didn't hear anybody raving about them, they said they were great, but it wasn't the same as what I'd heard about the Quang Si Falls in Lang Praban, and I kind of felt like nothing was going to match that. Um, it's not easy to get to the Blue Lagoon by yourself. You have to join a tour in which you're time restricted or you have to get a motorbike which i didn't want to do or you have to pay for a tuk-tuk and i was on my own so i didn't want to pay for a tuk-tuk by myself so i just didn't do it um, and the viewpoint um some of the friends i was with they did it and they said it was a really steep climb it was very difficult um and again i wanted to do it on my own but i didn't feel like it was safe to do it on my own it was too hot to do it in the day. If you do it at sunset, you come down in the dark. If you do it at sunrise, you go up in the dark. So again, I just didn't do it. I just enjoyed myself and my hostel chilled out and didn't feel bad about it. Um, so yesterday, that brings me to where I am now. I then got another bus to uh, Vientiane, the capital city. The worst bus ride I've ever had. So the bus driver would not let me sit in the front on this occasion. Um, there was no one sat in the front and he wouldn't let me sit there. Um, we picked up two guys who had bikes, um, bicycles. They wouldn't fit in the van, so we had to put two seats down, squish the bikes in, squish everybody in, someone sat in the aisle. Um, and then we ended up picking up two local girls who then went and sat in the front. Um, and it was just the most uncomfortable journey. Again, the roads were horrendous. They seemed to be even worse the nearer we got to the capital city, which you would think they would be better nearer the capital city, but they weren't. Um, and it took four or five hours and I was just so glad for it to be over. Um, so here I am, I've checked into a private room. I am denied about doing my hostel private room, but I thought I'm going to do a private room. I'm going to sort all my clothes and my packing out, empty it all out, um, repack it properly, work out if there's anything I don't need. Um, and my shower gel exploded in my wash bag, so it's meant I could properly wash my, my wash bag out, take everything out of it and leave it out to dry, which you can't really do in a hostel, you can't leave anything laying around. So I'm trying to make excuses for why I booked it, but ultimately I just wanted two nights by myself, in my own bed, in my own bathroom, and it's been great. Uh, so yeah. That was quite a long story, um, probably didn't cover everything, but ultimately I haven't done a huge amount in Laos, but I really enjoyed myself. I felt like I've taken it really slow, done the things I want to do, not felt pressured into doing the things that I wasn't fussed about, um, worked on my tan, and now I'm feeling really excited for my next part of the journey, 
uh, which tomorrow I fly to the Philippines. So I'm gonna get up at eight o'clock, get a taxi at nine to the airport, and I will see you in the Philippines. Lag on.